Okay, so if you're studying Algebra 1, not pre-algebra more or less, but definitely Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, most definitely pre-calculus, uh, these type of courses, you certainly need to understand this thing right here. And what we're talking about is piecewise functions. And this is an example of a piecewise function right here. And this tends to confuse a lot of students. Of course, uh, this is a subtopic of a broader topic called functions. Now, if you just think about it, how uh, often do you see this word functions in your math course? Now, if again, if you're studying, you know, a course like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, you study what? Well, you study polynomial functions, quadratic functions, linear functions, rational functions. Uh, for those of you that are like in Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, you study exponential functions, logarithmic functions, on and on and on. So this has a very, this word function has a very specific meaning to it. So you have to really have a good attitude. Just remember the root word to functions is fun. So if you're struggling with all this, I'm going to give you some, uh, you know, kind of suggestions, uh, some advice on how to prove your knowledge about functions. But what we're doing here is just taking a quick look at piecewise functions. So if you've been confused about this, let's see if we can kind of clear that up with this quick uh, crash course. Now, I have a question for you. Do you know how to graph this specific piecewise function? If you think you could do this, go ahead and put out, uh, take out a piece of paper and just come up with a quick sketch and put into the comment section, yes, I know how to do this, or no, I do not. Whatever the case is, just put in some uh, feedback into the comment section. I'm actually, gonna I'm actually gonna show you the correct graph to this, and then we're gonna talk in general about piecewise functions, and we're gonna use this specific function as our example. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics and uh, I'm going to tell you right now all of you can be successful in math and I'm especially speaking to those of you that are struggling uh, with math okay if you think you're a bad math student or like there's no way I could learn this stuff stop thinking in those terms because I'm telling you there is a path forward the number one thing you need is great math instruction okay then there's nothing more frustrating than being in a class or trying to learn from a book and being totally confused right so you're not going to learn if you don't know what's going on, right? And the way I uh, teach math is because math is a very technical subject is I try to kind of dial down all the technical terms and explain mathematics in a way that everyone can get what's going on without watering down what you actually need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, GED, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes, okay? When you think about, you know, a distribution of grades in a classroom, this right here is uh, basically what we call a bell curve. Maybe you've heard about it, uh, but it's kind of a, what we call a normal distribution. Now, you think about it. Let's say a class of 30 students, uh, and we looked at the grades of all those students. Guess what? Most of them are going to get C's and B's. Some of them are going to get a few of them over here get A's. And then, unfortunately, we got these uh, folks over here that are getting F's and D's, okay? So in here, in the middle, is the average, right? So again, most students take average notes. If you truly want to be great in mathematics, you have to take great notes. So I really stress this because I think a lot of people just dad eh, dismiss this, all right? Uh, and, you know, we're trying to get you to improve in math. So start improving in your notes and get yourself way over here, okay? Because you can definitely do it. If this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's talk about piecewise functions. I'm just going to get in, into uh, basically like a little mini crash course on this topic. So effectively what we have is two functions, all right? So we have this one function, f of x. It's uh, x squared, okay, sometimes, and it's x at other times, i.e., we can kind of think of this function as this. We have f of x is equal to x squared, all right? Now, when is it equal to x squared? Well, it's equal to x squared when uh, x is greater than 2. I'll show you an example 
or what, uh, you know, how to think about this in a second. And then we have this other function, f of x, same uh, function, f, and uh, it's, it, it's uh, equal to x when x is less than or equal to 2. So instead of writing it this way, we just write this one kind of big old bracket, and we kind of define it this way. So we're talking about two functions, and again, it all depends on what value of x we're looking at. So if we have values of x that are greater than 2, we're going to be using or uh, we'll be thinking about that x squared function. And if we have values of x that are equal to or less than 2, we're going to be thinking about that x function. Okay, so again, over here, greater than 2, that's x squared. I don't know if I misspoke. If I did, I apologize. But anyways, anything greater than 2, we're thinking about x squared. Anything 2 or less, we're thinking about x. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the graphs of these here uh, separately. So the graph of f of x is equal to x. Remember, um, in function language, f of x is the same thing as y. So if you wanted to graph this function, we could replace this f of x with a y if that makes it easier for you to think about this. And so here we have a linear equation. Oops, actually, I have this incorrect. Let's go ahead and fix that up. This is uh, y equals x. This is y equals x squared. So y equals x is a lovely a linear equation, a line a 45 uh, degree line, all right? So hopefully you understand how to graph lines. If you need help with any of this stuff, what we're talking about here is algebra one, algebra two level mathematics. Uh, so a couple of quick suggestions. If you're struggling with functions or uh, graphing a linear equation, any of this kind of stuff, go to my math help program, check out uh, my either my um, algebra one or algebra two course. If you happen to be pre-calculus, I do teach this as well. So any of those courses can help you out. Okay, so this right here, all right, the function f of x is equal to x, this would be its graph. And then the function here, f of x is equal to x squared, would be same as uh, uh, would be the same as the equation y equals x squared, which is just a basic uh, parabola, right? And its vertex is at the origin, 0, 0. So hopefully you understand that. Okay, now I'm going to show you the actual graph. And we're going to have to combine this graph here and this graph in some manner. But before we get going, let's recall that in our um, function here, our, our piecewise function, we're going to have x squared when x is greater than 2, and we're going to have x when x is less than or equal to 2. So I'm just going to kind of give you a bit of a clue. So right here at 2, okay, this is a kind of our like our line of demarcation. When everything is greater than 2, all right, when values of x, when x is greater than 2, we're going to have this graph, all right, but we're not going to have this graph. We're only going to have the parabola when x is greater than 2, and then here at 2 or when x is um, uh, 2 or less, then we're going to have this graph. So how do we put this all in one graph? Well, I'll show you this in just one second, but let's make sure you can evaluate a piecewise function. So I might be told to say, uh, find f of 5 of this function here. So we're like, okay, 5 is what? Well, 5 is a value that's greater than 2, all right? So you have to look at these inequalities. So I go, 5 is greater than 2, so therefore I have to use uh, x squared. So f of 5 will be the same. Um, when we evaluate this function for 5, it's going to be, we have to use x squared, so that would be 5 squared, which would be, uh, of course, uh, be equal to 25. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. F of 1, we're like, okay, F of 1, 1 is less than 2, so we have to use the X function. So that's going to be super easy. We simply just plug in 1 for X, so that's just 1. All right, so that's just a real quick example of how to evaluate piecewise functions. So when you're doing these problems in algebra, effectively, uh, kind of the Two, two main type of problems. There's other type of problems that you could have as well, but you definitely need to know how to evaluate piecewise uh, functions, which I just showed you, and then how to graph them. So let's take a look at the graph right now. So I kind of gave you a clue on how, how it's going to be constructed. So what you have to do is think about, all right, we have our x squared uh, parabola, okay, and this is going to be in place when x is greater than 2. So here's 2. So right here, I'm drawing my little parabola. Now, of course, that parabola goes around, but I don't need the whole thing, right? I'm not going to graph the whole thing, so I'm kind of just graphing this part of the parabola, and I'm putting an open circle at 2, 
okay? So I'm leaving an open uh, circle at 2 because this is for all x's that are greater than 2, not equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, okay, or less than 2, I have this uh, function x, right, which is like my 45-degree line, and it's going down this way, and I'm filling in that circle at 2, right? So this would be how you would graph a piecewise function. All right, so there's a lot of different type of um, uh, piecewise functions. You can actually make them more interesting. We can plug in other values. Let's say, let's kind of fix this up here. Uh, let's say we'll have the parabola x squared when x is greater than 5. Then when we have x is greater than 2, then maybe we can have another function here. Let's say x minus uh, 3 when x is what? Well, it would have to be less than 5, maybe less than or equal to 5. Whoops. Um, less than or equal to 5 and greater than 2, for example, some other interval. Uh, but anyways, I'm just kind of throwing this out there that you just, you know, you can have more than just uh, two functions in your piecewise function and all different sorts of intervals. So you want to start with the basics with this, but if you have been confused with piecewise functions, you are in good company. A lot of uh, algebra students, when they first look at this, they get a little you know, they're like, what is this? You know, they're like, I don't like this. You know, I don't like functions and all that domain range stuff. I mean, it's just totally confusing. Listen, you need to warm up to functions as functions are a huge, huge, huge part of high school level mathematics, high school and college level math. Again, just think about how many times you hear that word functions, okay? Trigonometric functions, uh, you know, irrational functions. This word has a very specific meaning, so you want to know a lot about functions. But attitude is everything. Just remember, I told you that functions are fun, okay, because it says so right here in the word. Anyways, uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.